How's it going, y'all? And welcome back to Beavros. We were looking forward to return with the review of Chapter 15 of The Mandalorian, but Lucasfilm had other ideas in mind. Since the introduction of Star Wars, we have never seen such an eventful day other than premieres of movies. Of course, we are talking about Lucasfilm's announcements on Disney Investor Day. They revealed the future of Star Wars by announcing nine new Star Wars series. Including highly expected Obi-Wan Kenobi, which will feature Evan McGregor and Hayden Christensen. Also a new movie called The Rogue Squadron. We will share all there is to know about what Lucasfilm revealed on this video. These are all the new projects revealed by Star Wars on December 10th. The order which we will talk is according to our excitement levels. Before we start, we have to say that the introduction of Disney Plus helped the development of Star Wars massively, especially the live action series are possible due to Disney Plus. We give credit when it's due. Obi-Wan Kenobi, the live action series that Star Wars fans have been highly expecting for years. We don't need to explain the impact of this character in the Star Wars universe and that he needed a series dedicated to him for years. Of course, even McGregor is returning to reprise his role as Kenobi. And there is one other rumor that is confirmed. Hayden Christensen will return as Darth Vader slash Anakin Skywalker in the series as well. He has been critiqued very harshly by his performances in episode 2 and 3, which eventually led him out of the filming business. But he became our favorite character in those movies. Hayden's return is a blessing for us and a deserved comeback for him. We miss seeing even McGregor and Hayden Christensen together. The series will take place 10 years after the tragic events of Revenge of the Sith as Star Wars officially announced. It was rumored to be 5 to 8 years later, but we hardly think that's important. We will follow Obi-Wan in his journey in Tatooine. We believe there will be a lot of exploration of Tatooine and the Force. There are a lot of unknown years in Obi-Wan's life, but the most interesting one is this period. There must be a lot of pain, regret and a feel of loss which are not the feelings that Jedi should become passionate about. After 10 years, he probably got over most of this. But we are interested as to how he will react to the events of Revenge of the Sith and what he thinks about Anakin. We also wonder what the journey he will go through is going to be. Ahsoka live-action series will set within the timeline of the Mandalorian and Rosario Dawson will reprise her role as Ahsoka Tano. We expect this to be a sequel to her Star Wars Rebels and Ahsoka will continue her journey to find Ezra Bridger with Sabine Wren. What we saw of Ahsoka in the Mandalorian was sort of a teaser for Ahsoka's own series. Her role was crucial as to understand Grogu's Jedi path, but Ahsoka was working on an objective of her own which looked unrelated to the series locating Grand Admiral Thrawn. It was obvious she expected to find Ezra by finding Thrawn. We do not know what will be the main objective of the show and who will be the antagonist of the show. We think the time Ahsoka finds Ezra is crucial to identify the unknowns. If Ezra is found early in the series, then Thrawn might be the main antagonist. However, if the main objective is to find Ezra, then Ahsoka might take a similar journey to Din Djarin. We can also see what happened to Captain Rex after the Battle of Endor and Star Wars Rebels. The Bad Batch animated series is the only series announced with an official trailer, which you can find out by clicking the i button. Since there is an actual trailer, it would make sense that this show will be the first series to air. Like Ahsoka series will be a sequel to Star Wars Rebels, the Bad Batch will be a sequel to Star Wars The Clone Wars which will highlight an elite squad consisting 5 clone troopers who have special abilities compared to a standard clone trooper due to their mutated genes. The trailer gives us all the information we have about the series. The first thing that we noted on the trailer is that the animation is even better than Clone Wars Season 7 which is no easy task if you consider Grievous' preview on Season 7 was better than his look on the Revenge of the Sith. The series will take place after the events of the Clone Wars slash Revenge of the Sith, specifically around the time of the Order 66. We would not be surprised if the Bad Batch is on a brand new mission after their task on Anexis and Skako Minor. A call from Chancellor Palpatine might announce them Order 66. 
We believe the Bad Batch had chips installed, but they might have removed them, or they might not have faced any Jedi to hunt down, as they do not have any Jedi commanders. Obviously, they were called back to Kamino when the Chancellor becomes the Emperor in his famous speech in the Revenge of the Sith. Seeing the animated version of the movies we watch from an other lens have been quite interesting. Bad Batch is an unorthodox group, so we think they will part ways with the new Empire. The scene where we saw Tarkin looks like he was not happy with the Bad Batch, which signals they might have done something that the Empire would not want, which might mean they become the Empire's new enemy. In the show, we expect to see some flashbacks from Kamino and their old missions to understand the Bad Batch's past. Also, there's one scene on the trailer that reminds us about the shipbreaking yard on Jedi Fallen Order. The shipbreaking yard where Cal Kestis is located looks very similar to the one we see on the Bad Batch trailer. Cal Kestis is just a Padawan at this point who survived Order 66, and his potential meeting with the Bad Batch might be the reason behind this survival. We are excited to follow the Bad Batch in their new journeys. Another Star Wars live action series that has been rumored to happen for a couple of years, Endor, is officially announced by a short clip from Lucasfilm and will be streaming in 2022. The series will build around Cassian Endor and K2SO's adventures as rebels and it will take place, obviously, before the events of Rogue One. How Cassian became a rebel and how K2SO was programmed for the rebellion might be some of the interesting topics we will see. Also, exploring the ins and outs of the rebellion will be great. In Rogue One, we have seen some of the darker sides of the Rebellion, which proves things aren't always black and white. The series might give us some more insight on that. For any who enjoyed Rogue One, do not worry, this show will be brilliant. It will have a similar vibe. Also, expect to see Krennic, Tarkin, and even Vader. They can all be involved. To be honest, the shows that we will talk about from now on are shows we do not have much knowledge about, so it will be quicker to go through. Rangers of the New Republic is another live-action series that will take place within the timeline of the Mandalorian. There are rumors that Cara Dune, who recently became a New Republic Marshal in the Mandalorian, will be a part of it. We would be excited to see her on this new series. We expect to explore the New Republic and how they control the systems. The New Republic did not do a great job of dealing with the threat of the Empire, as their return as the First Order destroyed Hosnian Prime the New Republic capital, in the events of The Force Awakens. It will be interesting to see the efforts of the New Republic to have control over the entire galaxy, as they are ambitious to have some sort of supervision, even in the Outer Rim. Also, we can see that the New Republic could not see the whole picture and might have been corrupt to not stop the threat of the Empire. Those could be some topics we will cover in this show. The Acolyte will be a mystery thriller series that will take place during the High Republic era, even before the Old Republic era. The High Republic is considered to be the golden age of the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order. They were very active around the galaxy. At this period, exploration and expansion of the Outer Rim took place. The rise of the Sith ended the High Republic, which we can call the fall of the Old Republic. The name Acolyte reminds us of the Sith and the colors which the title is spelled backs our point of view. Since this will be a thriller mystery, the Sith might be the mysterious and thrilling beings. We might have some insight about the end of the Golden Age of the Jedi and the fall of the Old Republic. A droid story will be about R2-D2 and C-3PO. The animated show will introduce us a new droid that we have not seen before as well. It is always nice to see R2 and C-3PO together, and we are excited to see their unknown adventures. Star Wars Visions will be an original series of animated short films. This will be a celebration of Star Wars Galaxy through the lens of world's best Japanese anime creators, which will come to Disney Plus at 2021. One of the few shows that we have a release here for. As we mentioned before, we like seeing Star Wars events through different perspectives and look forward to this new animation. We say animation as we do not know 100% that this will be an anime. 
we only know best anime creators will be a part of this project. We expect a quality summary of events of Star Wars with some little surprises. Maybe a more quality Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures, which are short clips to summarize the Star Wars movies for kids, but they're pretty impressive. The only movie that Lucasfilm announced is The Rogue Squadron, which will hit the theaters on 2023. There is a beautiful clip of the director of the movie, Patty Jenkins, introducing the movie. This movie will resemble Top Gun in our opinion. We are excited to see a squadron of pilots through their journeys. Star Wars Squadron's video game might be a reference point for this movie. Squadron's story mode is all about the missions of Rebels and Imperial Squadrons. Lando is the last Star Wars project that we will talk about in this video. This will be a new live-action series that will be around the galaxy's favorite scoundrel, Lando Calrissian. We are not 100% sure whether Billy the Williams' original Lando or Donald Grover, Lando and Solo, a Star Wars story, will play the character. We would not be opposed to see either of them. We love the original Lando, obviously, and Donald Glover's Lando was our favorite character of Solo. We can theorize that if we see Williams play the character, we might see his journey with Jenna from The Rise of Skywalker, or his journey with Luke Skywalker, which is unlikely. Donald Glover's Lando, on the other hand, can have an adventure starting from after Revenge of the Sith until the Return of the Jedi. There's a possibility that young Lando, played by Donald Glover, will be narrated by the Billy de Williams' old Lando. We did not feel the need to say it as it was obvious, but Mandalorian Season 3 is a part of Star Wars' future. We cannot be more excited about the future of Star Wars. It would be fair to say the sequels have been nothing but disappointing, but we must give credit when it's due. The series have been brilliant with Rebels, Clone Wars Season 7, and, of course, The Mandalorian. Also, we enjoyed Rogue One quite a lot as well. Looking at the new projects, all of these are promising, considering what Disney's Lucasfilm offered us so far. We hope this video was helpful and we cleared all your questions about the future of Star Wars. If you liked the video, be sure to drop a thumbs up and comment any of your questions. We would be delighted if you join us on the channel by subscribing. We will be back with the review plus what to expect in the Season 3 of The Mandalorian, so stay tuned for that. For now, Beavers out.